boat, I think three quarters of an hour ago, and every single step has been uphill. Every single step? Yeah. Okay, it is hilly, to say the least, but we're um, only got a quarter of a mile to go. It's two miles from the canal to go to an old industrial mill. Uh, apparently it's the only working mill of its kind in the country. So it'll be interesting. Over and out. <laughs> set up shop. I love it, I can make things this wide, but I think we need a bigger boat. Well, apparently Queen Street Mill is the last surviving 19th century steam powered weaving mill in the world. A time capsule set amongst an industrial landscape of chimneys, mills and terraced housing. This room houses 300 of the 900 looms that used to be in operation here. Just imagine the noise. There was an art exhibition in the cafe also by Blackburn Art Group and the coffee was excellent. So win-win. Well, here we are on Laura Maisie, working hard. I'm editing videos, Fran's earning a crust. This is the reality of working on board. It's cosy, but it's good. <laughs> How good was that Queen Street Mill, Fran? It was wonderful, wasn't it? It was a real experience. It was, we learned so much. I was so humbled by the whole experience of it and just fabulous va value for money. We weren't expecting much, were we, really? It's three pounds to get in, and you get an hour-long tour in that. And I thought, oh, an hour-long tour, I don't want to tag along on that. But you have to have the tour. You can't go around independently. But it was fascinating. And apart from the engineering side of things, you know, the, the steam engine and the actual looms, which, you know, goes a bit above my head, that sort of thing. But the human side of it, the stories, is just amazing. Absolutely incredible. To imagine what it was like working in that huge room, I think at the, at the peak there were 900 looms working mm. there and each woman would have to run six looms and I sit here casually weaving away on my one little hand loom but the pressure and stress that must have been on them to manage six looms with shuttles going at 30 miles an hour, keeping them threaded, keeping everything working and running through because they were paid her yard of cotton that was made but then they were charged for every fault that was in that cotton so if the thread wasn't straight or there's a little glitch in it they were charged yeah. and they were charged for any bits of cotton that were wasted on the floor or any oil drips that came from when they were oiling their looms all came out of their wages and their shifts were eight to ten hours yeah, a day like that, yeah. depending eight, on daylight hours, hours so it must have been horrendous and apart from the length of days, it was the, the environment they were working in, all the dust flying around, contracting respiratory problems. There were TB here, wasn't there? Yeah. The way they used to thread the shuttles. Yeah, yeah, because the shuttles, I'm going to show you one. I've got an old shuttle here that we bought after one of our viewers, Chris, told us it was for sale on eBay. Um, and I've had it for quite some time and didn't really appreciate all the technicalities of it. But your cotton goes on here and to get the end of the cotton out you have to get it threaded through here so the women used to suck at it and these were called kissing shuttles because they'd be sucking in 
all that dust and the bacteria and everything that was in the air. Yeah. So they ended up not only with deafness from the noise of the looms, but obviously really bad respiratory conditions. Um, just amazing, yeah, isn't it? Incredible. Amazing. But apparently they were a happy bunch working there, you know, and it gave the women a new lease of life back in the back in the day because it gave them the opportunity to earn some money and be slightly independent, more independent. So, yeah, uh, I think it was quite a step forward yeah. for women. You know, we complain about stress at work now and what it's like, but they they embraced this because it gave them a little bit of money and a bit of a separate life. But of course, they would then have had to go home and prepare meals and look after the family and I think that mill was running up until 80, 1980. 1986 I think it was yeah, yeah. so yeah, quite recently really yeah. but we'd love to know more about it and if any of you have got stories of relatives that used to work there or even photographs we'll put a link in for you to get in touch with us because I, I just or any other mills you know, around the area well It'd yeah fascinating to hear yeah. your stories yeah I've just, it's just completely made me think differently about it all and um, and of course we don't make any cotton now here no. in this country which you know, I don't know interesting and well worth a visit wasn't it big thumbs up for Queen Street Mills Burnley yes Go pay a visit and thank you Chris and I'm going to polish this up now um, and get it all working nicely there's metal ends on it and they're going to get polished up and we're going to put it up on the wall I think so lovely well, we've just left our mooring where Fran is filming me, filming her. And we're heading into Burnley today and out the other side as quick as possible because it's not very pleasant cruising through there. It's full of rubbish and little oiks that are off school at the moment. So uh, starting off pretty early, get through more up a few miles the other side. That's Reedley Marina. And we know we've got a few viewers in there because they've contacted us and said so. So hello everybody. Apparently the cafe up there is very good. This is where we last turned the boat and saw an otter and now we are on new territory. about to cruise across Burnley Embankment which is a 60 foot high three quarter of a mile long embankment which was built so they didn't have to lock the valley and go back up again in locks and it's uh, one of the seven wonders of the canal system apparently so so far so good we've only had to uh, stop and reverse to clear the prop out once or twice and uh, no hooligans not too much rubbish as yet so I think we'll be led into a full sense of security. Team Aston Villa thrashed at the weekend. Just saying.
these days burnley is quite built up around the canal and it wasn't always that way when the canal was built apparently it was um, quite rural but the success of the canal bringing industry into the town made the town grow pretty quickly and a uh, massive massive center for the production of weaving linen etc as you can see this valley here normally would have been locked so you can go down into the valley on locks then back up the other side so instead of doing that they um, built this 60 foot high embankment the crane here was used to bring up wooden planks so they could stop the canal if uh, they needed to drain it for repairs etc what do you think fran it's really good it's interesting lovely. isn't it it's so interesting to see the view over burnley from up here and it's actually quite pretty i quite like it You can just imagine in the Victorian era how black the sky would have been through the dozens and dozens of mills that would have been there and the, all the houses burning coal. It must have been absolutely filthy. So far, so good, friend. Yeah, we've gone into reverse quite a few times, but we've not had to go down the weed hatch, and I've managed to avoid the worst bits of the rubbish. And um, it's all smooth cruising. There's a lot of weed in the canal, but there's not as much rubbish as I expected there would be. All the cities are the same, to be honest, aren't they? You know, it's always yeah. areas where it's littered. But, it's but we've heard so many stories of well, we've heard so many bad stories about coming through Burnley. At the moment, fingers crossed, it's it's really quite pleasant. It's really pretty, and once again, we've said it before, but you can be almost in the middle or on the edge of town, and it's, the canal feels quite peaceful. Having said that, I think we're just getting to a more built-up bit, so perhaps yeah. we're speaking a bit too soon. Yeah, well, let's see. <laughs>
you wouldn't believe that you're in the middle of a city. It's beautiful. Wave to them. Nobody's flashing. <laughs> wave to this side. Nobody's flashing us. <laughs> you me. got a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> Franny got a hoot. <laughs> was inevitable that we had to get down the weed hatch but I think all in all we've got off quite lightly. Rich what? we're going backwards. I know the moorings the other side of the bridge weren't perfect so there was a shelf under the water we couldn't get close enough so we were going to moor here anyway, but I said, oh, let's just see what the other side of the bridge is like. And I wish we hadn't, because now we've got to go backwards <laughs> and moor up here. But the view is worth it. And the wind is blowing, the canal is still weedy, so it's taken us about half an hour. But we're hoping to stop for a couple of days, aren't we, here? Oh, at least. So, um, and the view's all ready for somebody to paint. Another view of Pendle Hill. All in all, not a bad spot, despite the roar of the traffic in the background. I guess we'll live with that. And there's Francis with the binoculars out bird spotting. Well, I'm just editing the video you're watching because I don't keep them backlogged. I just, it's the last minute thing, edit it and get it up. And uh, just reflect, I want to reflect on Burnley because you hear so many horror stories about Burnley and we didn't have any experiences negatively, negative experiences. The canal itself was relatively clean. There's a fair bit of rubbish in there. We didn't have any youth problems and it was really quite pretty. Well, apart from being really interesting, the embankment and, and the housing situation, it, it was really quite pretty, wasn't it? The approaches and... yeah actually being in town as well i think I, I might have said it on the video itself that i was really surprised by it because you get stories from people saying it's the worst place they've ever been to the worst town that they've ever cruised through and been through worse um i mean all mm -hmm. cities and towns get a certain amount of rubbish and dirty canal you get to expect that unfortunately but it was pretty it was and the embankment bit as you say was amazing looking over all the back-to-back -back terraced houses that the mill workers used to live in it was really interesting. Yeah, there was a boat rally apparently the weekend before, so I'm wondering if they had a bit of a tidy up. Maybe. Um, maybe, I don't know, but our experience of Burnley has been fantastic. I only wish we had the time to stop yeah. and visit the uh, Weaver's Triangle, which is the area around the bottom of the embankment uh, where there are restored properties and mills and uh, stuff. But. Um, yeah, I would like to have gone and seen that, but we can't do everything. There was there was actually somewhere to moor right in Burnley, and it's a pub mooring, and it looked really lovely as we went past, but we'd already decided not to stop, that we were going to go through. And also, as nice as it looked, to be moored up at a pub with the noise no. is not us, is it, really? <laughs> no, it's not us. Um, so, yeah, but as you say, we can't do everything. We, no. We're quite keen to get off this canal now. And there's things ahead of us still to see. So um, that was it. We did what we could. We did indeed. So thanks very much for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. It's free. I know you can do it on your television because we did it at my daughter's <laughs> house a few weeks ago. And uh, thanks to our patrons and members on YouTube. And we'll see you next time. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Ta-ra. Bye. Bye.